every one of us have had such practice of wanting to go back into their childhood. There's so many benefits of being a child. It took me three good years to understand how I could possibly tap back. But also we have a common job that we are all participating or contributing to do here on earth. We discover our true self inside ourselves. We know that what keeps the children being the children is just that. We all have heard so many stories like that. As we grow older, we constantly strive to connect back to our childhood. We so much believe that there is something in our childhood that knows about us, that knows our journey, that knows where exactly we're supposed to go, we're supposed to do, or who we truly are. Even unconsciously, we do this. We think that, or we believe that what we used to do when we were children, the dreams we used to have then, we so much believe that things that we used to do when we were young or when we were children has a lot to do with what our gifting or our gifts and purpose is here on earth. So we usually try to go back. We even speak this when we are telling stories about ourselves. Many of people, especially those who are singing or have special talents, most of them when you're questioning them or speaking to them, they will tell you where they started. I started this when I was eight years old. I started singing when I was seven years old. Or a parent will say, my child used to like drawing from the age of three years and so and so. We all have heard so many stories like that. But not only that we have heard, I believe that every one of us have had such practice of wanting to go back into their childhood with the only one aim to find what we're there desires, what were their aspirations, so they can connect that with where they are in their journey and wanting to know where they're supposed to be or where they're supposed to go. This concept has been practiced by many scientists, therapists, psychologists. They all encourage us in so many ways to train ourselves to tap back into our young self, to find what our dreams were by that time. But not only that, to find what we were dreaming or doing, but they encourage us to go back and tap back into that power, the power to dream, the power to create, the power to let go, the power to play as we were as children. Now what is really fascinating to me is that this concept is not just a concept that just came from nowhere. It is actually a principle that was given with one man that lived here on earth 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ himself. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3 to 6, please find it and read it. It says, until you change and become like a little child, you cannot enter to his father's kingdom. That is the heavenly kingdom. Isn't this amazing? You know, it usually gives me great joy, like a great joy, to see how all the scientific studies, despite that they think that they're trying to go against in some ways sometimes, but most of the time, they are really confirming to us of what the scriptures are. Look, I think we're still on this video, we are speaking exactly about why we do what we do. Why do we behave the way we behave? With just this simple principle, is what actually drives our entire life. So now we know that not only we have common desires, but also we have a common job that we are all participating or contributing to do here on earth. And that is to access the heavenly kingdom. I know you might be thinking, oh, okay, Jennifer, now you're preaching, you're telling us, but I, I just want to let you know that it's not about preaching. It is what it is. It's a life journey. Whether we look into it in the mirror of religion, spirituality, whatever you think, it is just the way of life. It is what it is. And I want you to take a break and ask yourself a little question. Just think about it. We are speaking about being a little child and having to access all those benefits of the power to create, to dream, to let go, 
to play. But not only that those power, but there is something beyond that that gives greatest joy and peace. So now we know that there's so many benefits of being a child. We all can agree in our different stages of life that this is true. But what I want you to notice today is that that term did not just come from nowhere. It started with Jesus Christ, who as as Christian would believe to be the Savior and the Lord of our lives. Let's keep going. So we have all been in that stage. But now the question comes, we all have been into that stage of being a child. Then what's so difficult for us not to go back? And it's truly not just to go back into the shape of uh, being a child or to go that in that stage physically. What I mean is, what is so difficult for us not to tap back into those powers we had when we were children? Where do we get stuck? Or what gets us stuck? Here is what I found out. That the reason we get stuck is because we do not know where and when to change. Remember, we are still coming back to that principle of Jesus Christ that he gave in the book of Matthew, that if we do not change, so what stops us is that we do not know where and when to change, but also we do not know how to become partakers of that kingdom. And this being the most hardest question to myself, wanting to know how can I tap back recognizing all the abilities I had when I were young, all the information I could access when I was a child, and now asking myself, where did it all go? The dreams I had when I was a child, the visions, asking myself, what happened? It took me three good years to understand how I could possibly tap back to that power. And that is the reason I have created a signature coaching program called Understanding you. I first did this, not was it just a trial. I had to go through these stages with the aim of just finding myself back again. Because the truth is, we do not find ourselves out of ourselves. No, we discover our true self inside ourselves. That might be a little bit confusing, but worry not. Because this signature coaching program, Understanding You, is designed with all passion and love and excitement to get to help you to know who you truly are. It has been a practical experience in my own life. If you think this has been a product of prayer, of maybe something else, I just want to let you know. I had to introduce prayer inside this to just get the strength to act. But all these were there. So there are just some components that were missing, but the power was still in there. And so that your power to dream, to create, to play, to let go is still inside you. There are just little things that has gone out of you that you have lost access to. And you just need few components that can adjust everything about your life. And the signature coaching program is what it's going to do for you. So if you're still watching this far, I want you to stick to the end because I'm going to tell you more about what you really truly desire in this life. And not only that, to help you understand where from us today you can take action or start taking action from. So the Understanding You Signature Coaching Program, the link is going to be in the description Below. So make sure you have a look onto it. Not only that, I have also created a community called Understanding You Project. Because guess what? Learning about yourself or getting to know who you are is a lifetime project. It doesn't end until your life is done here on earth. So I want to invite you to come into that community. We are not only going to be speaking about the things that you're not aware. We are only going to be speaking on to how we can help you and get you back to yourself, to the true you, not the real you, because that is a real you right now, but there is a true you inside the real you. So getting back to our topic today. First of all, did you know that we all have common goal in this life as individuals, and that is to find peace and joy. Tell me who doesn't want peace and who doesn't want joy. Although this means different things to everybody, but whatever this means to you, you can agree with me that we all strive to find peace and joy. And the one fascinating thing, that's part of this seeming to be the most difficult thing to achieve as individuals here on earth. 
We all have been in this state. We all have experienced this greatest peace and greatest joy at least once in our lifetime during our childhood. All little children experiences this, the greatest peace ever and greatest joy ever. They don't know what anger is. They have no anxiety. There is no fear in them, no depression. Regardless of what might be happening around them, they have no idea of what anger, depression, anxiety, fear is to them. There is no such thing. So truly, in actual sense, we all desire to become like children, consciously and unconsciously. We all do. And still we believe that when we are able to become like those children, we can have access to all the benefits or at least enjoy this life to the fullest. That is our faith. I've had so many people, including myself, I've mentioned it, I've spoken it in different areas. How I wish I'm a child so I don't get to do one, two, three, so I don't get to experience one, two, three. Who doesn't wish to become like a child? <laughs> at least not to pay bills. Being accountable for the things that the world or the, the life throws you at. Who doesn't? This might seem funny, but it's actually not funny. It's, it's the actual truth. It is the reality, the life reality. There is something about children or there's something about being in that state. But not only that, this now stands as an actual proof that a child is closely connected to the creator. Because of course, there must be something or someone that is holding that child, that is making everything possible to that child. A child doesn't have to work out physically, even emotionally. Most of the time, the child will only cry. That is the, the most powerful emotion that they have or they experience, just the cry. But there are so many things that they do not get to do by themselves. And that is the power that we all need to find out. We need to figure out what is that and how can we connect back to that so we all can go back in that state of being a child. And now, ultimately, having to access all those benefits, love, peace, and joy, just like a child does. But now I want you to know what I just realized that could possibly be an answer to this question. Look what I found when I read on that chapter a little bit further. He said, but who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me? Guys, isn't this amazing? So the answer to our questions is just simply a faith. What is faith? Faith is just an act to believe in someone or something that is greater than you. So we know that what keeps the children being the children is just that they believe. Because look what we are told. But who shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me? So the answer is they do believe in their creator, God. I just want you to take some time and digest a bit more about that. What does he speak to you? Or what do you mean? And I would like or love to hear whatever this means to you. Share with us in the comments below. I will see you on the next episode. So kindly do not forget to join the community group, Understanding You Project. And also look at the coaching signature coaching program that I've just created for you, where you can now book your sessions. Kindly do not forget to share if you find this video helpful. And give us a feedback of what you think about this particular topic today. Thank you so much. I want to again remind you about joining the Understanding You Project community where we will all have a chance to learn about ourselves. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next video.